Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today I am here in Beijing, China. I've been taking care of uh, some things for my family and it's been quite a lot of work. This has not been a fun trip, but um, I have been watching the feedback that I've been getting on my Azure Functions uh, series that I've been rolling out um, that I pre-recorded before my trip here to, to China, to the Middle Kingdom. And uh, yeah, hoping you guys are enjoying the Azure Function series and a lot more to come. Uh, today, I wanted to drop a mailbag episode. Um, this comes from a person by the name of Alofin. Alofin. Uh, Alofin. This was a this was a comment on my most recent video, part four of the GitHub Actions Terraform CI/CD pipeline that I've been doing. Um, they write. I noticed there are multiple projects in the single TF state container. Is it normal for a dev team to store all their infra in one container? Once the infra starts spanning across different regions, is that when you introduce another container in a separate region? I find that part of the TF backend state management a bit vague. People have discussed on Reddit the uh, best way to approach splitting up a state file. Maybe you can cover this in a later video when you mentioned uh, trying to deploy across regions. Or maybe it's just a risk assessment of what is the most stable region, then agreeing to store all TF state there. Anyways, uh, so good question. I would say when you're using the Azure blob storage as a backend, um, within ARM, blob storage, is the, the, the blob storage account is, is essentially uh, primarily functioning as an RBAC boundary. So it's a way that you can lock down this, the Terraform state within that storage account. Um, due to you know, storage account limitations and the granularity of access control, um, you really don't have much control below the level of a storage account. You're looking at get, giving somebody a role assignment that gives them blob data reader access to that storage account, and then they pretty much have access to all the containers in there. Now, that so, so as a result, that means that your container and the containers really doesn't matter. It's, uh, you know, in terms of how many you have. And so, yes, it's pretty common to have one container and then have a whole bunch of files in there. Now, remember, Terraform state files are not the biggest files. So it's not like we're really exercising the Azure storage service very much. Um, it's more we're using the Azure storage service as a very convenient and inexpensive way of storing those state files. And we're using the logical construct of the storage account as a boundary, as a security boundary for the state files that we contain within there. So what you typically see is, depending on how you want to organize the security of your Terraform state files, is you'll see a different storage account for each security boundary that you want to set up. So this could manifest as three different storage accounts, dev, test, prod. You know, if you want to have separate security contexts for each of those environments, or it could manifest into non-prod and prod. And then you might, within the non-prod uh, storage account, you might have dev and test. And then within the prod storage account, you might have production, you might have staging, you know, you might have any other environment that actually has that you consider production because it has production data in it or whatever. However, you define what pr what production or what prod means, you would have environments that go in there. Um, and so within those security boundaries, you're probably going to have multiple Terraform workspaces. Um, one, uh, a team might support multiple services or multiple deployments um, that, that manifest as different applications. Um, and so each application, each deployment is going to have its own state file. Um, and then within that security context, you might have multiple instances of that application, dev or test, um, deployed um, to, you know, with that state file in that storage account. So there can be a number of reasons why there are a num there are many different storage there are many different state files within a single container. Um, you could introduce additional containers if you wanted to just logically separate things to keep things neat and tidy. But that storage container really is only acting as a logical 
uh, as a logical boundary or grouping. Um, it's not adding a security boundary or any other value other than, you know, a box that you can put your stuff in. So um, if you are OCD that way, by all means, like you can add as many containers as you want and group group your state files into those different containers if that makes you feel happy. It doesn't it doesn't add a tremendous amount of value though from a from a security standpoint. Um, so those are things to consider um, when you are organizing your state files within an Azure Blob backend. I think how you compartmentalize your deployments is a is a totally different discussion um, in terms of what should be included in one Terraform apply. Um, you know, should you have shared infrastructure and your application all in one go? Or should you have separate deployments for the shared infrastructure and for the application? If you have microservices architecture or, you know, more of a dis decentralized distributed architecture, you may even have uh, a core infrastructure and then many uh, different deployments that are independent of each other that would be candidates for running those in different apply Terraform applies as well. So that's a that's a whole different ball of wax that you need to get into. One decision that you have is how you organize state files, which is more around the security context of the environment. And then the another question that you have, have to ask yourself is how do you compartmentalize your deployments using Terraform? What should be included in a single Terraform apply? Um, so those are those are two distinct uh, architectural decisions that you have to make and you have to think about. A third thing that you need to think about is if you're doing a multi-region deployment, does my Terraform state file need to be deployed in the same region that each of my deployments are in? And the answer, the short answer to that is no. Terraform state should be thought of as a separate system. Um, it is independent of your application. The Terraform state files that you store are used as part of the deployment or the release management process of your application, but it's not like there's no hard dependency of your application on this on this thing on Terraform state. Terraform state is required for your operations, your op the operability of your application. So your operations teams are absolutely going to need your Terraform state, and they're going to need to have access to it. But if you deploy Terraform state to a region that's different than the, the regions that you deploy your application to, and that region goes down, it doesn't mean your application goes down. It just means that your, your ability to run Terraform apply is diminished, right? Um, unless you have a backup copy of that state file somewhere else that's accessible. Now, Azure Blob Storage has a number of different, very resilient storage options uh, that you can take advantage of. GRS, ZRS, etc. that drastically reduce the impact of a regional outage. Um, you can even have read-only access, um, which again, if you want to change an environment, doesn't really help you that much. But at least your state files at that point are still accessible, uh, which means you could copy them um, to, a, to a new region using the read-only access if there was a regional disruption. Um, so that would all be part of a DR strategy that you would need to, you know, build out for your Terraform state. And I would encourage you to consider the availability and the DR strategy for your Terraform state as a distinct architectural problem from the from the the availability and the DR strategy for your application. Um, the requirements are going to be different. Uh, just because you have uh, an application that may have a certain of a high availability requirement or DR requirement doesn't mean your Terraform state needs to have the exact same. Um, and the same solution may not be required for both. Um, in most cases, Terraform state, DR and, uh, and availability can be mitigated with Azure Blob Storage capabilities out of the box with maybe some addition of, back, of, a, of a sound backup strategy um, and maybe a cross-region replication to allow you to pivot when a disaster strikes, you can at least have a read-write accessible copy of the Terraform state file in a region that's available and up and ready so you can do deployments. Um, so I, I think I did a video on DR with Terraform in, in another video, so you might want to check that out as well.
So your availability and disaster recovery strategy should be different for your Terraform state that, than it is for your application. As a result, when you do multi-region deployment, you don't need to have your Terraform state in, um, in all the regions that you deploy to. Um, you can pick a region that you want, um, again, as part of your availability and DR strategy for Terraform state, and you could probably set up replication to a secondary region um, just in case you know something bad happens to that first region you can still continue to deploy to it. Now, if you do have independent requirements for your multi-region deployments, and you wanna manage those individual regions independently of each other, that's something that you should uh, consider in how you structure your, in, your Terraform project in and of itself. Um, because if you're trying to run a Terraform apply that spans multiple regions, and one region is having an outage, when Terraform goes to check in with those resources within that one region, you're probably going to have problems. It, it will add additional complexity that you'll have to accommodate through targeted Terraform applies uh, to target specific resources when you do the apply. Um, another way to approach this is to organize your Terraform code uh, to, to have uh, a tighter blast radius around the regions and global resources themselves. So. Just uh, some things to consider with a multi-region scenario, and I'll definitely get into this in my Azure Function series um, because I'll be taking my little baby Azure Function and I will be expanding that to be a multi-region uh, deployment. So we'll look. So we'll look at some of these multi-region scenarios as well. I hope this helps. You know, thinking through how you organize Terraform state within Blob Storage and within uh, Blob Storage containers. Um, and really, at the end of the day, it comes down to the security context that you want to set. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, smash that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And that's it for me uh, here in Beijing, China. I'm going to be drinking some more of my red tea and trying to get some work done. Cheers. This is the Azure Terraformer, signing off.